Oh, wow. Call this meeting of Lima City Council to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting with the invocation by Councilor Glenn, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all this coming together, Lord. Lord, bless each one of our minds. Lord, allow us to make great decisions for our great city of Lima. Bless our administration. Bless every city council here, also the residents in the city of Lima. Oh, God, I ask you for the blessing of my Father tonight, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon. Here. Mr. McLean. Here. Mr. Lowe. Here. Ms. Crayer. Here. Ms. Adams. Here. Dr. Glenn. Here. Mrs. Miles. Here. And Mr. Nixon. Here. Uh, scheduled public hearings tonight. We have the 2017 tax budget. We do have a call for that. And we'll have the clerk read the call. Okay. Notice is hereby given that on the 11th day of July, 2016, at 7 p.m. in the Lima City Council Chambers, 50 Town Square, Lima, Ohio, a public hearing will be held upon the 2017 tax budget for the city of Lima. All interested persons desiring to speak to the budget will be given an opportunity to do so at the time. Following is a summary of the budget. General fund, $32,775,558. Water works, $16,775,289. Sewer disposal fund, $13,092,501. Garbage and refuge, $2,749,231. Guaranteed water deposits, 7,242,339,000. Sewer improvement, 10,760,914. Stormwater sewer, 2,468,967. Miscellaneous funds, 21,242,012. For a total of 107,106,811. Copies of the entire tax budget are on file in the Office of the Clerk of Council and the Office of the City Auditor, Municipal Center, 50 Town Square, and will be open to public inspection during regular working hours. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak towards the issue of the uh, 2017 tax budget? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. For the second call, if there's anybody in the audience that would like to address the issue of the 2017 tax budget for the City of Lima, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Third and final call, if there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak to the issue of the 2017 tax budget for the City of Lima, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we'll declare that public hearing closed. The next public hearing is the CDBG public hearing number three. This public hearing is for discussion of the 2016-17 CDBG uh, Consolidated Plan Fund Allocations. Ms. Odom, I'll let you speak first on this. Um, Thank you. I'd just like to remind um, those listening at home and those in the audience that this is the third and final public hearing for uh, the 16-17 CDBG and home funds allocation from the federal government, from HUD. Um, We've had a series of very productive meetings, and I appreciate the time and patience of council um, and the um, applicants in trying to make some very difficult decisions about some very limited funds. At the last meeting, there was discussion about moving some funds, uh, $15,000 for property maintenance, and about $8,000 from demolition and placing that into the Bradfield Center request to allow them to be fully funded to that um, $55,755. After that last meeting, as our tradition, uh, we double checked our proposed allocations with HUD. There is a small problem in that the way that they um, view our allocations is that some projects are considered public service activities. And again, um, for those at home, um, this information will be up on our website tomorrow. Uh, Those in attendance, there are copies of this information at the back. Public service activities, that category activity cannot exceed 15% of the new funds, the new money received this year, and our program income. Those those, um, activities that would be receiving public service funds this year would be the police services, housing counseling, the Bradfield Senior Center, 
the Summer Recreation Program, and Rhodes College. Those, the total of their funding requests exceeded our 15% public service cap by almost $8,000, $7,856. After discussion with the mayor, with the finance director, with HUD and the public works director, uh, we would like to recommend a solution to this. Currently, in that group of public service projects, the summer recreation, the summer parks program is funded at $15,000. By removing summer recreation from the public service um, total allocation and funding that with general fund dollars, that drops our public service cap down to 13.86%, so we stay within the required public service cap. And it does a couple other things as well. It removes the recreation program from a lot of the red tape that the families um, need to go through in our small um, public uh, parks staff needs to go to and qualifying kids and um, constantly verifying their income um, and participation in the program to meet CDBG deadlines. The other is that um, by moving those funds back, that also allows some money to be put back into demolition. By taking summer rack and putting it general funds, it would also allow um, the demolition allocation to go back up, and we're recommending it to go up to 92,624. And again, that's on the spreadsheet that's provided for this evening. So it brings it back close to its original request of $93,000. Um, we've been speaking for some time about the opportunity that's coming up uh, for residential demolition, but commercial demolition um, still remains a problem in this community. Um, we're hoping that by taking summer rec out of the CDBG equation, funding it with general fund, it would allow us to continue to fund the Bradfield Center, the new um, allocation, which is greater than last year's allocation, and to put some money back into demolition. So that's our recommendation for this evening. Okay. So there's anybody in the audience that wishes to speak to the Proposed allocations of CDBG funds, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. For the second call, is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak to the proposed allocation of 2016-17 CDBG funds? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Before I have the third call, I will open it up to council members. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams, do we need a formal um, motion? Okay, uh, law mm -hmm. director shaking his head. Yes, <laughs> it's good enough for me, uh, Mr. President. I make a motion that we accept the recommended adjustments as explained by Ms. Odom of removing the summer recreation from uh, one of the five public service projects under CDBG to the general fund, and we uh, take that money, uh, fifteen thousand. Uh, and allocate that uh, to demolition uh, based on our actions at the last meeting of reducing that um, to help fund the Bradfield. Second. Second. Motion the second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. One thing I want to say is make sure uh, by putting recreation in general fund, uh, this vote we will continue having recreation. It's not going to alleviate the money because it's in general fund. Uh, I brought up free council about the long-term future, that it will stay in general fund. And uh, uh, where I, a non-development person saying that, it's more easier to keep it there. So I don't want to see three or four years down the road this be one of the programs get cut and we don't have the summer program. And that's the reason why I brought it up there. So everything at ease and our uh, I accept it too. Thank you. Thank Good you, time. Mr. Glenn. Yeah, so, um, Mr. President and Law Director, I'm just to, to clarify the motion. Um, what I would recommend is that you move to accept the draft of 71116 of the um, CDBG and home projects as recommended. That, you can do. that way, that establishes the slate. That's the one that says. Yep. Seven gotcha. okay. okay. Got it. That way it establishes Sweet. that slate of mm -hmm. projects that we have to up or down vote on at the next council meeting. Okay. So, um, Mr. President, 
Um, and then I will. I would like a copy of yes. that, so I have that since it's going in the minutes. I withdraw my. Yes, that includes tonight's change. Okay, Ms. Adams. Uh, Mr. President, I withdraw my uh, motion. Mr. Gordon, you want to withdraw the second? Yes, sir. Thank you. And I would like to make a motion to um, accept the draft as of 7-11-16 with the uh, adjustments as explained by Ms. Odom. Second. The motion the second is to accept uh, the proposed allocations as shown on the copies uh, titled draft as of 7-11-16. Is there any discussion on that motion? All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Um, is there any further discussion on uh, from council under the public hearing portion? Seeing none, I'm going to give the third and final call. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to address uh, the allocations for the 2016-17 program year of CDBG allocations, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I'll declare that public hearing closed. Uh, next is uh, the consent calendar. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that uh, item B, C, and D be received and filed, and item A be received, filed, and approved. Second. Second. The motion in the second is to receive, file, and approve item A and to receive and file items B, C, and D. Is there any discussion? Actually, A and B should be received, filed, and approved. Because uh, it's the continuation of the public hearing. Okay. So it's actually continuing. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. Withdraw my uh, motion. <laughs> Sorry. And we'll make a motion to receive and file items C and D, receive, file, and approve. Items B and A. Second. Second. Motion the second is to receive, file, and approve items A and B and to receive and file items C and D. Is there any discussion? Thank you, Sally. Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number one. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to place tax assessments. Mr. President. Ms. Crayer. I move that communication number one be received and filed. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number one. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number two. From the finance director regarding legislation for the 2016 budget amendments. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number two be, re be received and filed. Uh, legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number two. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> the motion carries. Communication number three. From the finance director regarding legislation for the 2017 tax budget. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number three be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number three. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number four. From Chief Martin regarding legislation for disbursement of funds from the asset forfeiture account. Mr. President. Mrs. Miles. I move that communication number four be received and filed. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number four. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number five. From Chief Martin regarding legislation for disbursement of funds from the asset forfeiture account. Mr. President. This is Miles. I move that communication number five be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number five. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Communication number six. From the Director of Utilities regarding legislation tendered to an agreement with Coal Line <coughs> Power Associates. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number six be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number six. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number seven. From the data systems manager requesting legislation to purchase new network switches. 
Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move the communication number seven be received and file and authorize the law director to prepare any necessary legislation. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number seven and to authorize the law director to prepare any necessary legislation. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number eight. From the auditor regarding the contract labor report. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I'm with communication number eight, receive and file. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number eight. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number nine. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding the new permit to Ambridge Hospitality, 803 South Leonard. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that communication number eight, or excuse me, number nine, be received and filed and the clerk authorized to file with no objections uh, with the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number nine and to authorize the clerk to file a notice of no objection with the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 10. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding a new permit to Kroger Limited at 515 West Elm Street. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. I move the communication uh, number 10 be received and filed and the council secretary uh, able to notify the Ohio Division of Liquor Control with no objections. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number 10 and to authorize the council clerk to notify the Ohio Division of Liquor Control of no objection. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 11. From the city engineer regarding legislation to grant an easement to United Telephone Company. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number 11 be received and filed and legislation's on tonight's agenda. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number 11. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, next, under reports of officials, we have Bill Bradish, Palmer Energy Company, regarding electric aggregation. Did I say your last name correctly? You Thank okay. you very much. Good job. Good evening. Bill Bradish, Palmer Energy, Toledo. Uh, that's in Ohio. <laughs> up north, isn't it? It's, it's up north a little bit. Uh, good evening. I'm happy to state that uh, I'm not here to ask for any funds and, and hopefully provide some opportunities for some savings. Uh, the, the topic is uh, electric aggregation. Uh, first of all, Palmer is a, a energy consulting company, uh, not tied to any utilities, any suppliers, totally unbiased, and, and currently the, uh, the consultants of the County Commissioners Association for the entire state. I've been working with that program for uh, quite a few years, primarily um, in excess of 50 counties right now are participating, pooling their resources and obtaining reduced electric and gas rates for the facilities that they own. In addition, there's many counties participating in what's called electric aggregation, which is an opportunity to obtain reduced electric rates for your constituents, your residents, and small businesses. This is a, uh, a program that's available through and dictated by Ohio Code. Uh, there's a, a couple different ways to go about it, but the reason I'm here today is because s many entities <coughs> within the county are already participating in this. Four years ago, the, uh, the county commissioners started a program um, the entire unincorporated area of the county is participating and allow me to read the other entities that are. Uh, I know uh, the villages of uh, Beaverdam, Bluffton, Cairo, Fort Shawnee, Herod, Lafayette, and Spencerville. This does not pertain to anyone who is in the, uh, the co-ops, if you will, the, the uh, you have Mid-Ohio and someone else, if I'm not mistaken, that, that are our, your rural electric opportunities. Those people, this doesn't touch them. They continue doing what they're doing. This is an opportunity for everybody else to pool together and get reduced electric rates. Uh, the program that's, that has been instituted within the county is what's called an opt-out program. And an opt-out program per Ohio code requires a ballot issue. 
and uh, countywide, the commissioners were able to do that, but that only applies to unincorporated areas. All incorporated areas have to do individual ballots on their own, which these other entities did four years ago. And the, uh, the reason we're bringing it up now is their agreement is going to expire in 18 with some RFPs going out in 17, and the city of Lima would so choose to participate in such a program, it would greatly enhance the rest of the county, obviously. Uh, we, we, there are currently a little over 8,000 residents participating, an additional 1,600 uh, small businesses are participating. Small businesses can participate if they utilize less than 700,000 kilowatt hours a year. And, can part and of those that are participating and have been for the last four years, uh, cumulatively they have realized savings in excess of $5 million over the last four years. So it, the program has worked well. Uh, surrounding counties of Van Wert and Hardin and entities in Nogles are all participating and will all come due when this agreement come, comes due again in 18. So it's a great opportunity to take a look at it. I'm here to present it to you. Uh, let you know how it works. Um, it's an opt-out program is such that everyone who's eligible is included unless they so choose not to be. Versus an opt-in program where I have to raise my hand to say I want to be in. Opt-out programs present an opportunity for lower prices because everyone's included to begin with. The suppliers know that. They're going to give us a better price to begin with. <coughs> okay. Questions at this point? Yes, sir. Okay. Does this affect just only residential customers? And any commercial customers that utilize under that 700,000 threshold. Okay. So those utilizing under the 700,000 are automatically in the group. Eligible. Yes. Well, that's what I'm getting at. When, it, when you say eligible, if a measure is put on the ballot and passed, they would have to opt out or they'd be included, just like the residents. That's correct. correct. Okay. That's correct. Well, it's important for businesses. Very much so. Quite frankly, we have a lot of small businesses in our community whose proprietors don't necessarily live inside the city. Correct. Okay. Um, and I haven't talked to, any, talked to any to know whether they gee, wish they were out in the county where they have it or mm -hmm. could have it, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, For the municipality of Lima, that is a separate ballot issue and a separate buying group, if you will, than you know, separate from the county. It, it can be or cannot be. No, explain, Mr. President. You, the uh, first of all, yes, it's a separate ballot. Okay. You, you would you would need to initiate a ballot, um, and at that point, you're simply you're simply asking the constituents to agree to allow the city to act on their behalf to aggregate for better rates. Okay. Okay, there is currently a program through the county commissioners that you could choose to join together with them. You could function on your own uh, or, or you could pool together. Okay, someone has to be an aggregator within mm -hmm. the state and certified with the PUCO. The county okay. commissioners are already certified with the, with the PUCO to hold the paperwork to be the aggregator, if you will. Okay, okay. And, and I guess I'm, I'm looking at it from a legislative standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to determine whether we're simply going to act on our own as the aggregator, then put it on the ballot, as opposed to we have to say we're going to join with the county and then still, we put still ballot. put it on the ballot, but do we put it on the same ballot issue as the county no. residents vote on? Irre irregardless, you're putting it on the ballot as a separate issue. You okay. don't even have to determine before the ballot how you're going to handle it or what who you're going to join with. Okay. Th that's okay. The, the ballot issue is a ballot issue, and it passes. It gives you the right to act on this at any time in the future, and it's evergreen. Okay. And once you pass it, it's passed. How you, how you implement it then is up to you. Okay, that can be defined later. Defined later. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the ballot issue is, is basically the first step, Mr. President, and then after that, you're deciding how to proceed forward. 
Okay. Yep. Great question. Are there any other questions from council members? Mr. President. Ms. Crayer. Uh, let's say uh, we decide to do this and our voters go ahead and pass. Um, if we allow or we join up with the county to be our aggregator, does that give us more of a, a bar, uh, you know, a brokering power or does it really matter it, either way? It matters a lot. It, it's, it's all about the numbers. It's all the buying power. The, the 8,000 residents I mentioned right now, you potentially could double that, that count by adding the city of Lima to that and adding that to the other surrounding counties that are participating. The greater the number, the greater the price. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mr. President. Mrs. Miles. So, so if we, if the uh, community decide to join together and get this great price, is that price fixed or is it variable? It's fixed. Yep. It would be a fixed price for a determined term. Uh, the, any most most of the agreements recently have been two to three year terms. And then, uh, and then renegotiated uh, at the expiration of those terms. Uh, and most recently, we've been able to negotiate zero termination fees so that you're, if you're in it and later decide you want to be out, you can get out at no charge. But it has to and, be during that period, uh, like a three-year period. Okay. Well, th there is an automatic three-year per the Ohio Code, and you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. But by negotiating a zero termination fee, if, if we're able to do that, even within those three years, you could opt out at any time. Okay. You, you wouldn't be exposed to that. Okay. okay. So also, is there a cap as to how much the rate can go up in that three-year period? It can't go up. It's fixed. Okay, but it, once the three-year period has expired <coughs> and the next three years starts, is there a cap as to how oh, it can deviate from, from the original um, mm, cost? No, it's, it's a brand-new uh, RFP. It would be a brand based on market conditions. It would be a brand new RFP to all certified suppliers to bid on the business for another term. Mm. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. Yes. I just want to make sure because we, we had some, just got done with one that I'm dealing with a stitch with. Mm -hmm. They said the same thing. They rehearsed the same thing. Okay. Saying that they will not have to pay anything back. As soon as they counsel it out, that got a big bill in the mail. Yeah. And, and, and that's a great point. And, and they saying that you guys telling people this, this is what I talked to the electric company about. They said mm -hmm. they shouldn't, you should read it over. And then I had an opportunity to read it over on the fine line yeah. there. You're not there for six months. You're going to pay for yeah. it. Yeah. Now this is entirely separate, but you're absolutely right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Many of you may already be in a third party agreement for your electric. You may, you may, you get these things mm -hmm. in the mail all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You sign up with somebody for a third party at a little bit better rate than what you're paying the utility, which is fine, okay? But in those individual agreements, there are termination fees. Mm -hmm. And that's the fine print that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so if, if I individually elect to take someone and, and take their price for 12 months, and in six months I decide to get out, I'm probably going to be exposed to termination fees. If you're in this group buying program, what I'm telling you is we've been able to negotiate zero termination fees. Okay. Now, the, the program that the rest of the county is in right now that expires in 18, when we did that four years ago, it had a $50 termination fee. Okay. Since then, some recent ones we've been able to be zero. Mm -hmm. But the individual ones you're talking about, I've seen those be up to a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a couple hundred. And anyone who's in a third party, if we were to proceed with this, and people are already in a third party, I'd recommend you review that first before you jump into this program. Don't necessarily get out of the one you're in until it expires if you're going to be exposed to termination fees. And in fact, if you're in a third party agreement when these letters go out to opt out, you would not even receive one because the database would show that you're already in a third party supply. Doesn't mean you can't join. You could still join, but the initial mailing, you wouldn't be included. Okay. Because you're already with a third party. No, normally we go all the way around. I, but I, I know. I'm going to interject because I want to want to clarify something. So if I've signed up um, at my house, say mm -hmm. through apples to apples, whatever, and I'm in a 
contract from for a three-year contract, not that they exist, but a three-year contract mm -hmm. that expires in 2019. Yes. If we go aggregation and we have a contract that starts in 2018. Mm -hmm. And you like the price. And I like the price. I still have to stay where I am or eat the termination fees there to join. Correct. 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 If I let that lapse, do I automatically get brought into the aggregation? You or do I have to take a specific action because, here, quite here's, frankly, that's going to be tricky for yeah. people. And what happens is, at the expiration, when we have this program going, the supplier will, most, most of the time on a quarterly or semi-annual basis, send out new letters to people who have moved in, to, to new eligible people. At that time, you'd, if you expired, you'd probably show up now in the database of being eligible and would receive a letter to join the program. Okay. Okay. Or you could call and say, hey, I expired last Friday, or, I'm, or I am expiring next Friday, and I want to get in now to your program. Okay. okay. That, either way, that, that, that can be done. Okay. But I always caution, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. President. Just a side that I know you don't have any control over, but one of my things, one of my problems with the whole deregulation process is that if the government is good with aggregation, mm -hmm. then the PUCO should be required to notify homeowners that their contract with their provider is about to expire and they have aggregation available to them. I couldn't but agree they don't more. Do that. Okay. I Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing I wanted to ask is, you mentioned a three-year contract. How often does this go on the ballot? Though? Possibly. We have entities going on the ballots every, every election period throughout the state. Well, I mean, if we, if we put it on the ballot, say in the spring of 2017, mm -hmm. how, do we have to go back to the ballot for renewal of the process? No, sir. So it, it's once it's on, you're in, you're the aggregator, and then the contract is what comes up. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. That's correct. Because I was thinking with a, a four-year ballot cycle and a three-year no. contract. No, okay. no. Once, uh, and, and I'll be honest, when deregulation started, what was it, 2003 or whatever, there were entities that passed it at that time, and electric rates weren't that bad. They didn't even act on the program until five or six years later. Okay. Uh, all you've done passed the ballot issue. Okay. At that point. All right. Any other questions? Um, okay. I guess the other note that I made was that in, in, in just to clarify it, Mr. Glenn, I know that you were talking about termination fees and I mean, those exist now. If I'm with XYZ Corporation Correct. for my electric and somebody else has a cheaper rate and I decide to jump to them, XYZ Corporation can charge me a termination fee okay and that's I mean that that's out there now I mean I'll be honest with you. I wasn't a big fan of this mm -hmm. three four years ago because I don't I still I understand it now a little bit that I've been shopping on my own sure um, usually months after a contract has expired because nobody tells you it expired um, I couldn't understand how adding a layer would save money. Mm -hmm. I get it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's protection in this when, with those expirations. In other words, in this program, when those when this term expires, the other one's going to kick in with new letters to you on what the new rate and the new term is. Okay. For you to have the opportunity to say yes, I still want to do this or not. Okay. So that automatically comes to you when any new term or rate is negotiated. Okay. That's there's another per Ohio out. code. There's another op code okay. that has to happen and does happen. Yes, All right. that's a that's a great point. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, as you know, the city has uh, for its own electric uh, needs <coughs> has conducted uh, a couple of reverse auctions that have yielded long term contracts for us. This would not. So we no. continue to have supply to do those uh, previous auctions. Um, 
Is that a function of us being a user over the 700,000 kilowatt hours? No, I think we could actually be in the... You probably have facilities that fall in both areas. Okay. But you've, you've pooled them into a contract with yeah. all, all the facilities, so they would remain where there until at. those contracts expire. But yes. then they could be considered, considered, and I guess, but but strengthen our position possibly, possibly. But you would probably pursue what you're currently doing first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I would recommend that. Yes. Okay. My second uh, comment is a question: By what date, if the city was interested in? Proceeding to the ballot issue, by what date would we need to do that to participate in the market? Uh, I can safely say that if you are on the ballot by for the spring, in the spring, you would be able to participate in that pool, that next pool, that larger pool. Obviously, it's like any ballot issue; you have to be to the board of elections 90 days prior to the to the to the election. Uh, for the November issues, it, it's coming up the first Tuesday in August or, or whatever that date is. Right now, for the November ballots, we'd have we'd have to get there. But to answer the mayor's question, to participate in what I'm talking about in the rest of the county and trying to get everybody together, if you were to be successful on a spring ballot, we would have time to coordinate that. Total savings for folks in the county that now participate. Yes. On a per household basis, how much was that? That was over this last four year period, it's been an average of $145 a year per household, as has been the, uh, the electric savings. Remember now, this is basically on just half of our bills. It's on the generation side of our bills, the electric supply, not the distribution and transportation. So we're, we're saving on. 50% of our bills, which are deregulated, but it has been approximately $145 a year for each household. Okay. Any other comments, questions? And as a, as a side note, we, uh, we are doing these programs through the County Commissioners Association, as I've mentioned to the mayor, as effective in October. Uh, Palmer Energy will also be facilitating similar programs through the Ohio Municipal League. And that, that agreement's on the table and uh, we'll be doing the same thing through, through the league. Okay. And those, those, which all the more gives us the ability to coordinate and, and bring more higher numbers together, to your point. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. Yes, sir. Are you the cheapest of all your other competitors? We are not the supplier, Councilman. We are, we are the negotiator, and we are the advisor and the consultant. We put it out to bid for it to the suppliers and, and negotiate the best market price for the program that we would recommend. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, we get paid. Okay, we get paid. Uh, that is done. There is no... Uh, additional payments or uh, fee. The fee is embedded in the kilowatt hour price. It's negotiated with the supplier, so the supplier pays us. Okay, I get it. And be happy to share, be happy to share that. And, and currently through the County Commissioner Association, we rebate a portion of that back to the County Commissioner Association, which in turn rebates it back to the county. How much did I get last year? It's not a lot of money. How much did they get last? I would say they probably got about maybe three thousand dollars to general fund. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for council members. Um, I know this is uh, for some the first time that we've heard about it. Um, is there, I, not, I guess I'm, I'm not so much interested in a sense of your position yet, but a sense of your time that you need to review this 
so that we can have another discussion on it. I don't want to just let it languish uh, and then we end up uh, February 1st missing the March, you know, uh, spring election deadline or something. Is it something that, I mean, we'd come back to it in the middle of August and maybe have a council of the whole meeting and discuss it a little bit further? I mean, I, Sam and Todd are shaking I, their head, I, I, yes. I, 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 in my opinion, I mean, I was here the last time they came through four years ago or five years ago when they came through when the county did it. Uh, so I'm very familiar with it, so I don't have an issue with it. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, I can think of a lot of things to do with $145, so I think it's we should explore that option. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any input on that yeah. side? I think, okay. I think probably the concern would be the $50,000 bill that we would have to foot here and where would it come from, you know. But I think overall the program for putting it on the ballot, the 50,000, I missed, I guess I missed the, it all, 50,000. I, I, I thought I heard Mr. Geiger say that putting it on the ballot would be? About 10 grand. No, it's about 10. Okay, it's all right, that's, that's a lot better. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure, excuse me, I'm not sure where I got 50,000 from, but. That, that's, and that's only if, uh, if we have, don't have anything else that's already on the ballot that would require us to be there anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't that uh, fluctuate with the amount of issues? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we put that, it? That, that's commonplace. I mean, mm -hmm. even the. Our elections, mm -hmm. I think our offices have a cost borne by the city. I'm sorry, Mr. Could we go council as a whole so we can just try to advantage and disadvantage, just bring it all up and see where we're at? No. Yeah, I'm not asking for a yeah. motion to pass. I know, this but right I'm saying now. I'm okay. saying I agree with you about uh, council as a whole there, okay. so we can just put it all out. And, and I believe on the table. you're going to have more questions, and in, the, in right. the interest of time, I tried to not be too detailed. Mm -hmm. And, and I, there are more details I can be more than happy to provide, and, and I'm sure your questions will spur that also. Okay. And uh, we'd be more than happy to share that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, with that said, I'm going to make a motion that we refer this issue to Council of the Whole. Uh, we'll set a date later. Uh, second, second. For August. There's a motion in the second. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Um, Mr. Bradish, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate and it. for the information in advance. And any helped. further questions, uh, certainly Sally knows how to get a hold of me. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, reports of committees, the Public Works Committee. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. And the Public Works Committee met on 614 of 16 at 5.30 p.m. Uh, here in Council Chambers. And everybody's received a copy of the minutes, and I ask for the minutes to be received, filed, and approved. Second. The motion the second is to receive, file, and approve the committee report is submitted by Councilor Gordon. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 136-16. Uh, this is a second reading, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to transfer the title of 1440 West Spring Street to Lima Allen County Neighbors and Partnership. Mr. President. Ms. Crayer. Um, I move that ordinance 136-16 be moved to its third reading. Second. The motion the second is to place ordinance 136-16 on its third reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 14016. Amending, this is also a second reading, amending section 272.03 of the codified ordinances of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that ordinance 14016 be passed on its second reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass ordinance 14016 on its second reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Glenn. No. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Ms. Crayer? No. Ms. Adams? Yes. And that's it. Ordinance 14016 uh, has five yes votes and three no votes. It will go on to third reading. Ordinance 14216. A second reading amending section 1254.01 of the codified ordinances. <clears throat> of Lima, Ohio, governing adoption of standard codes. Uh, Mr. President. 
Ms. Crayer? I move that ordinance 142-16 be passed on its second reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass ordinance 142-16 on its second reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Glenn? No. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? No. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 142-16 has been approved by, passed by a 6-2 to two vote. Ordinance 146-16. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lima, Ohio. Mr. President? Ms. Crayer? I move that Ordinance 146-16 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 146-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 146-16 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 147-16. Amending the 2016 annual budget. Mr. President? Ms. Adams? I move that Ordinance 147-16 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 147-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Why well, the clerk call the roll? Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 147-16 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 148-16. Adopting the tax budget for the 2017 fiscal year for the City of Lima. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that Ordinance 148-16 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 148-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? <coughs> yes. Oh. I <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't hear it. No. Maybe she called and somebody sneezed. <laughs> Okay, Ordinance 148-16 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 149-16. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Coline Kaler Associates. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 149-16 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion and the second is to pass Ordinance 149-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 149-16 has been passed on its first reading by an 8-0 to zero vote. Ordinance 150-16. Sorry. Authorizing a payment from the Asset Forfeiture Fund. Mr. President. Mrs. Miles? I move that ordinance number 150-16 be passed on this first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass ordinance 150-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. And Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 150-16 has been passed on its first <coughs> reading by an 8-0 vote. Ordinance 151-16. Amending Ordinance 92-16. Uh, Mr. President. Mrs. Miles. I move that Ordinance number 151-16 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 151-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Of the clerk call the roll. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 151 16 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 152 16. Authorizing the mayor to grant an easement to United Telephone Company DBA CenturyLink. Mr. President? Mr. Gordon? I move that Ordinance 152 16 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 152-16 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. 
Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ms. Crayer? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ordinance 15216 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 15316. Establishing the positions and classifications here and after set forth and fixing the salary and compensation of such positions and classifications, repealing existing inconsistent ordinances as herein described. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that Ordinance 15316 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion of the second is to pass Ordinance 15316 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Lowe. Yes. Ms. Crayer. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Ordinance 15316 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Tonight we have miscellaneous business, Mr. Glenn. Oh boy. Howard. Let me talk. Howard. Let me show the mic. I got access. Oh, oh, no phone step. Okay. Hey Howard, we have a problem with the bicycle route on Cedar Street. Uh, bike trail there. Um, the problem is we need a fence there. At least around the houses in the area. What's been happening there? They've been using the area to walk behind people's houses. And I had an opportunity to talk to uh, the manager there, and we got some of the folks don't want to renew their their contract due to the, all the noise that come in the back. Uh, people walking at nighttime, uh, some trying to peek through their windows of their kids. This was told to me, so I had an opportunity to talk to some of them. Is any way we can find any? And I wish we had brought that up before we got it put there. A fence right there where the houses at on Cedar Street little curve there you got about eight houses in that area that they use it to cut across in there and to go to the park they've been using that nighttime a lot uh, I was gonna talk to the park ranger but the park ranger don't it's not available to about nine o'clock you know but they most of the time have been done late at night so is in the future we can look at trying to look at a fence there or something uh, Mr. Glenn, I will uh, take that concern and uh, get and review it. Uh, may need uh, to talk with you later about the specific addresses of the houses in question. Okay, okay. thank you. That sounds good. Okay. I have one more thing here, and it's very exciting. Uh, I had an opportunity to take some kids. Uh, you know, a higher kid program is still <coughs> moving around pretty good. We was out in Lida uh, doing some work out there. Uh, so Ryan, we was in the, we was in a store in Elida. After we got done with the job, Ryan and Taylor asked could they donate their money to the police officers in Dallas. And someone overheard it, and they had made eighty five dollars on this job. And this good this good guy, I don't know who he never gave me his name. He just told me to give him a call, and I gave him a call and. He gave the kids, each one of the kids, $400 a piece. They wanted to donate the money. And they kept saying, could we donate our money? I didn't know where the money gets sent to. So I'm going to ask the Chief Martin if he can give me the address. That we, they want to help the families out that the police officers got slain. They want to donate the money there. So the kids do. I didn't know the address. I've been on the Internet trying to find out the address and everything. Okay. Okay. But the guy, whoever it was, it well, I appreciate him. Uh, he told the kids parents would have picked the money up because he was excited when the kids was in the store talking about it. They kept asking, me, and they 14 years old. And he said, Mr. Clean, we'd like to donate our money that we work for. So that was pretty good. That was very exciting there. And uh, and I just want to uh, say that uh, we are keeping that all the families in prayer that uh, they, the tragedy they had to go through. And I know it's, it's very tough. It's very, very tough. So let's keep it. All the police officers, the family members, the kids. And, and I know it's tough on the kids. So. And that's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Mrs. Miles. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, Westgate Neighborhood Association is meeting uh, on July 17th at 630 Chamberlain Huckley Funeral Home. The speaker for the month of July is Rex Maurer. He will be speaking on tips on gardening and flowers and vegetables. Sure to be an interesting conversation. Um, I also, too, want to offer my condolences to the, um, the, the 
incidents in Dallas, the police officers, all of them, the ones that, that were shot and then the ones that, especially to the families of the five that were slain here, um, truly, truly touched my heart because these police officers were out there protecting their city and, and to, to die in a line of fire like that has got to be a horrible thing for the families here, knowing that each day that their loved one goes out and tries to protect the city from, from hurt, harm, and danger here. So my heart goes out to them. Also to the black males that were killed. We still have to consider that they were, for what we know, injustice was done to them and they were, they were killed in a way that, that they did not deserve it. And so we, we have to consider that too. And I, I just want to remind people as we talk about it in the community to be careful how we talk about it here. You know, this issue is not about hating blacks, hating whites, or hating police officer. This is about hating injustice. And, and that should be our focus here. And we should be able to do it, you know, and where we're not harming anyone. Yes, even in the 21st century, you know, injustice is still exists, you know, in our country, in our city. And we still have to have to be concerned about the injustice that is done, you know. Uh, not everybody's perfect, not everybody has a, has a pure heart and a clean mind here. And so there is injustice and we can't forget that. And you know, a lot of people when that occurs to them, they, they operate uh, using their emotions and not using their head to, to come up with a, a way in which we can fight injustice. And so we have to remember that it's not about you know, the individuals is about the, the act, you know, the, the injustice that's being done. You know, one of the things that Martin Luther King says, you know, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. And injustice does matter to a lot of people in this country. And they may not be handling it the correct way, but it is something that needs to be addressed. It is a concern for a certain uh, population of this country here, whether you be black or white, you know, but mainly for the blacks here. But again, you know, injustice, <coughs> even in the 21st century, still exists. And so as we talk about it in our community, about what happened uh, last week, which all these tragedies are bad here, I, I just want to encourage people to be hopeful. You know, it's not the end of the world, even though it may seem, seem to be uh, the end of the world. You know, we've had uh, tragedies like this before. 9-11 was a, was a horrible thing that happened to our country. But, you know, little by little, we rebound. And, you know, and if we look over our history, there's been a lot of things that have happened in our country that have been horrific. And, and this is just another one, not to slide it, not to say that, you know, we shouldn't be concerned about it, but we still have to talk, you know, as, as if there's hope. Because in our, even in our city here, I hear so many people talking about doomsday. They talk about, you know, Lima is getting worse and worse with all the shootings. And I have to, have to encourage them to say, hey, you know, you know, you can't sit around and with your head down, you can't say, I'm gonna leave Lima. I can't, we can't say that nothing's gonna ever be totally right. It's just always gonna be things going on. It's just how we approach it with our temperament, you know, our attitude about that. You know, a lot of us can do things about it. You know, we, in our own little circle, we can make a difference, you know, with, with the way that we talk, the tone of our, of our attitude and so forth. And so even in your little circle, as you hear people talking about, you know, all the tragedy that's happened, let us say some kind words. Let us say something to give these people hope because people are feeling hopeless. They're feeling like, you know, this world is coming to an end, you know, but, you know, the, the person that's in totally control, he still is in control. It may not seem like it, but it came as no surprise to the man above that this happened. Nothing catches him by surprise. And so we have to take it in stride. We have to remember that things are always going to happen in our country. You know, when you're dealing with people, there's always going to be things. So, but let us be a dispenser of hope and not doom and, 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 and the world's coming to an end. You know, make sure we say some kind words to these people and give them hope for the future. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Miles. Mr. Gordon? Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I had the opportunity to go out to uh, Schoonover Park on a Friday evening and enjoy our observatory for the first time in my 50 plus years. Um, and man, that was neat. And I really, uh, I think it's a big deal that we have this thing here in Lyman. We've, we've had this uh, observatory uh, for a really long time, 1963, which is longer than uh, Mayor Berger's been the mayor. <laughs> which is, that's one thing that, that yeah. but, it's, it's really, really an awesome place. I just want to encourage people to, if you haven't been out there in a while, go back out there. I learned so much. Uh, it was fascinating. I took my 
wife and some of my kids and my grandkids and oh man i had to drag the grandkids out of there so it was it was great so and the only thing other than that is i would just remind people to be good to each other thank you thank you mr gordon mr mclean thank you mr president um i think we all celebrated a um event about a week ago and if anybody didn't go down to the park pro park uh, they missed a great show uh, i think all day long it started off with a little bit of rain but the um, 5k run went off successfully and um you know when we got done with that i had to go take a nap but <laughs> we really really did there was a large crowd and it happened all day and even even till the evening there was crowds all through there so um uh, i think i saw more fireworks away from the place than i saw at the place sometimes it felt like the whole weekend friday saturday sunday everybody had a lot of money to spend for fireworks it seemed like so uh, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it and everybody from what I heard so far has been safe and I think that's one of our jewels that we have at our city so no one got to go down there they should have taken the time that's something that we put on sponsored by the city and several other sponsors the Lima News and 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 those people put a lot of time and effort of putting that show on very safe environment food you know rides for kids it was a phenomenal event and I think that if you missed it, shame on you. You know, we have uh, all of the um, different entities are putting on bands in the park. Uh, look at, there's, there's no, no one that can say there's nothing to do on Friday or Saturday night in Lima, Ohio, or even Sunday night. They have those bands in the, on Sunday. So uh, look around you, grab a neighbor, take them out to the park on a Sunday afternoon or on Saturday or whenever they play. Enjoy yourself a little bit. Smell the roses. That's what's going to make our city better. Uh, the only other thing I have is uh, Northside Neighborhood holds their meeting the third th Tuesday of every month, which will be the 19th. Uh, that starts at 7 o'clock at St. Mark's Church. That's across from the school on Metcalf Street. Um, come out. If you have an issue, we have the COP officer usually is there. Uh, that's really handy and convenient for our neighborhoods. He, he hears what's going on and can take action and brings it back to uh, the chief and his fellow officers and they can help you. So uh, I do want to thank the chief and all the police departments because there's a lot of people out there that was act, I thought were acting and having a good time on the 4th of July and I didn't see any issues whatsoever. So you, your department did a very good job out there. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Mr. Lowe. Thank you. Um, got about three or four different items. One thing I want to know is, is there anything possible that we can do concerning the lighting with the underpass on North Union Street? I know we own that property at the, off of Wayne Street, but it is extremely dark. I spoke with a resident who said she didn't feel comfortable. Um, her car had broke down. She didn't feel comfortable going up under that bridge, but because it was a shorter route to her house, she chose to take it, and a gentleman approached her, and she said she had to run for a couple blocks. So that really bothered me. I just need to know if there's some way. We used to have lights on that underpass you know, years ago. We no longer have that, but if we could get some kind of lighting, uh, maybe from our property uh, going across that stretch uh, to help out for those that might just have to uh, walk or be put in that situation again and to help them out. Maybe someone to see them. Um, the other issue with lighting is uh, we were promised a light at the corner of Central and Elm. Uh, if somebody can send me an email and let me know where we're at on that. Um, I know there's some costs with that, but I need to know so I can let the residents know how soon that'll be. Uh, we've been waiting on that for a while now. Uh, the railroad tracks on McDonald between Wayne and McKibben are outrageous. I, I know in the past uh, our president asked that a letter be sent. We communicate with them in some kind of way, and they jumped on it uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But uh, the railroad tracks, again, on McDonald between Wayne and McKibben, I think it's time for the city to say something or make a phone call, if we could please, and get those tracks fixed. 
don't want to interrupt you, Mr. Lowe, but isn't that uh, one of the crossings that's being repaired in the next this week and next? Well, I hope so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the street's being closed so they can do that. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, striping. When you are headed up North Main, uh, after you pass McKibben Street, uh, actually directly in front of Holler, it uh, goes from two lanes to one lane. And I have witnessed about four or five near misses uh, where individuals think that it continues in a two-lane uh, thoroughway. It is, it is not. It goes to one. Um, honestly, I think maybe it needs either restriped a little bit sooner or maybe cut it out from uh, uh, McKibben. Uh, but the streets merge right there, and they're literally racing trying to get into the one lane. And uh, if there's no cars parked on the east side of Main Street, they race. It's ridiculous. And my fear is the individuals that stay in the facility next to uh, where Cypher Hosselman used to be, they may get hit because some of those use motorized uh, wheelchairs. So if we could uh, look at that striping over there. And uh, this has been weighing on my heart all week. I'm tired of seeing individuals getting killed. And in my ward, there's been a couple of places that have been getting a lot of attention lately. I had every intention of coming forth and doing what I could to get uh, the bar known as the G-Spot liquor license uh, taken. Uh, our law director said that he has been in talks with them and at this time I would like to see if he would publicly uh, speak on those talks. <coughs> Mr. President. Mr. Geiger. Uh, Councilor Lowe uh, and the rest of council, um, this past uh, the shooting was last week and this past uh, Thursday, I was uh, literally at my desk preparing the uh, necessary paperwork to file a uh, lawsuit against the uh, owners of the uh, establishment uh, to uh, uh, attempt to obtain a court order to close them down as a public nuisance. Um, but as I was in the middle of preparing that paperwork, I received a call from uh, the owner's attorney um, giving me information relative to uh, uh, some potential plans that the owners have uh, for the bar, part of which included them voluntarily closing the bar, uh, which was effective uh, last Thursday, July 7th. So it's been closed since that time. Um, in, in fact, uh, the owners have uh, signed a uh, memorandum of understanding uh, relative to their agreement to close the bar. Uh, nobody else is allowed in there. Uh, the police department has the authority to arrest anyone uh, who's unauthorized in there. Um, and in fact, the police department now is in possession of a key to the premises. Um, the, the owners are in the process of uh, uh, trying to, uh, to develop the plans that they have come up with. And um, uh, in the, the near future, I think there should be some clearer understanding of, of um, that process, but in the meantime, they've agreed to close it down. Uh, and uh, if uh, they were to attempt to go back, uh, the paperwork is still on my desk and can be ready to go uh, very quickly. Uh, we will not hesitate to file. Uh, can't guarantee what the result is because that's somebody else makes that decision, but we certainly can try and we will make every effort to do so if it's not resolved in an agreeable manner. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Ms. Crayer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first of all, this <coughs> Sunday, the 17th from 1 to 4, at the Elective Resource Center, the Allen County Housing Consortium is holding a uh, Welcome Home Lime Affair. This is going to be a great opportunity for people who are interested in buying a home, um, or if you're already in the community, you can get out and meet your neighborhood associations. But um, it is designed uh, to help people who are first time home buyers. They can meet with lenders, they can see houses that are on the market. Um, there will be uh, 
lots of different entities there that will help people get into uh, homes here in Lima. And it's going to be a wonderful opportunity. So that's 1 to 4 this Sunday at the LAC NIP Resource Center on Spring Street. Um, also, to piggyback off of uh, Mr. McLean, this um, Sunday started the Council of the Arts has music every Sunday night from 7 to 8.30 at the um, Down and Fro Park. This is going to go here until September the 5th. The music varies about the style, but every concert I've been to in the last, I can't count the years, uh, has always has been excellent. Um, they sell slaw dogs. If you have never had a slaw dog, I challenge you to try it. It's delicious. Uh, so you want to check out the band. Um, or, you know, weather, rain out, if they're going to have it, if it's raining. Look at the uh, Council of the Arts website. Um, also, talking about area festivals, of course, every Friday night you can come down to Rally in the Square. But something a little uh, near and dear to my heart, this week, uh, really Thursday <coughs> through sa Saturday, is going to be Wapakoneta is having your Summer Moon Festival. Um, I encourage you to go to that event. It's going to be their giving away iPods for kids and the canoe races and wiener dog races and just stuff to do. So if you're looking for something to do this weekend with your family, um, come down for that. Uh, I know that Crattersville just had a big event that people were really excited about. So there are things to do in this community um, if you just do a little digging. Also, a couple weeks ago, I did a ride along with Officer uh, Sam Chris Jr. I told him I would publicly thank him, and I hope that he gets a little embarrassed on my behalf. Uh, that was, he, uh, we are on some adventures together <laughs> that night. Um, but it's a, it is a small community, and um, even if you, even if when things get tough, you just listen and you open your eyes and you open your heart. Um, we had an incident uh, that when we were riding together that I had to sit in the car for an hour and a half and uh, patiently wait um, and pray that everyone involved, everyone involved was safe. And then a couple days later, one of the kids at Ohio State, he's a, he's a veteran now, so he's not necessarily a kid, he's in his 30s. He was telling this side of the story from his perspective and it, it just really kind of brought the community together in a smaller sense. So to him, Chief, so I say thanks. Um, also, uh, thank you to all the police officers who worked the 4th of July. Uh, that event, as Sam said, was efficient. I live in the neighborhood that surrounds the park, right? And I, you know, come 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock on the day of the fireworks, you cannot get into your driveway. Like, you got to, like, pay people to get out of your parking spots, right? But that day, uh, it was coming up in the park. It was fast and efficient. They were out for another hour and a half cleaning up parking uh, cones, and it was really, really impressive to see um, how the communication went between any situations that they had. And so thank you to all of them who stayed and worked. That was a long day, I know, for all of them. So the last and the least, that's it. That's all. Thank you. Okay. I who have nothing. <laughs> we get you every time. No. Um, <laughs> All the good stuff's taken. Um, I want to look at. Uh, I'll get to her in a second. I'm thinking of this now, and I want and I want to get it off the table before I forget. Okay. Um, just mark. Council members should mark their uh, calendars for August 15th to Monday evening at 6 p.m. That's when I'll be calling the council at the whole meeting for electric aggregation discussion. I'm sorry, Miss Adams. I have nothing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. Hey, I did ask you if you voted when everybody, you know, trounced you out. That was first. one of those nights. Yes. Yeah. Um, Must be a full moon. Well, you have nothing. And I have nothing. Let's go. Mr. President. Ms. Adams. I move that City Council adjourn um, until... July 25th at 7 p.m. in these chambers. Second. The motion the second is that Lima City Council adjourn until July 25th at 7 p.m. in these chambers. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries and we are adjourned. <laughs>